Hey guys, Rachel here. Welcome back to another pencil stash video. Today we are actually going to be doing something a little bit different. As I was kind of flipping through my coloring books, kind of looking to see what I felt like coloring this week, I stumbled upon this page. And it's kind of the, you know, Halloween atmosphere, magic potions and all that. But for some reason, the only thing that spoke to me on this page was this jar all the way up in the corner and I want to do something a little bit special with it so we're just going to do sort of a mini episode today where I'm not going to color the whole page I'm just going to color this jar right here and again doing something a little bit different a little bit unexpected with it but I think it'll be a lot of fun so let's get started And yes, this is the jar right here. This is the one that spoke to me. And I, call me crazy, kind of want to draw a goldfish in here. How cute would that be? So I'm actually going to look up some goldfish references to try to find one that kind of fits the composition here. And I'm going to draw that in. All right, so I found a goldfish on Pinterest, and I'm going to try to recreate him in the water here. I think he looks properly freaked out about how he's going to be used. He's in kind of a nice, tight, compact composition. I think he'll fit nicely right here. And of course, I'm going to do it in pencil because, I mean, you need to erase. And yeah, pencil. By the way, this Coom pencil sharpener works on regular pencils too, duh, and you get a super, super fine point. All right, I got my fish for the most part, at least the outline of him, drawn in, and now I actually want to almost erase him. <laughs> and I want to remove probably about like 60% of my pencil just so that it is kind of gives the impression of him being there so that I can use it to color, but I want as little of that um, kind of pencil line as possible, at least kind of imperceptible. And then I'll go in with my colored pencils and draw him in. So still using my reference photo that I linked down below, I'm gonna color him very similarly. And I'm just kind of starting out with my black pencil, just kind of giving those really strong impression lines that, you know, really kind of differentiate his shape between his body and his tail fin and his side fins and, I don't know, all of the weird goldfish parts. Um, the black line just kind of serves to differentiate those, which I was really drawn to in this illustration. It's super, super cute. So I'm following the exact same kind of color palette, the same kind of look, and I'm just going back in with those black lines and kind of outlining that part and then following it up with a few oranges. And another thing that I really liked about this is that the tail fins or side fins, I don't know, goldfish fins, um, have these sort of lines in them. They really give that like nice impression of that kind of ribbon effect that uh, goldfish fins have. Um, so just kind of drawing those in with my lines. And this being so small, you really do have to lean on kind of the the details here. You want to just give the impression that it's a goldfish, the impression that its fins are, you know, kind of ribbony and flowy, and these lines do just that. And now the other reason that I really liked this illustration in particular and why I used it is because of the expression on this fish's face. He looks very freaked out, doesn't know what's going on, so in our hypothetical little story here, he could be just an innocent, scared little goldfish in which very, very sad, or maybe he's been kind of transformed and he's been imprisoned in this really cool glass jar. So you can kind of create any kind of story that you want, but in the end, he would definitely be freaked out either way. So I really like the expression on his face. So I wanted to make sure that that came across in my version and I think it did. All right, he's not perfect, but he's awfully darn cute, and he definitely at least conveys the goldfish vibe. So he's obviously also the secret ingredient to whatever potion this is. And we're just gonna start coloring around him. All right, I really kind of want him to look like this potion is 
water with maybe something a little bit kind of sinister or special about it. So first things first, I'm just going to go in with this super, super light uh, Crayola color. It's called Absolute Zero. I really like this one because it's bright, it's poppy, but it's it's not neon. And you can layer right over top of this really nicely. So we're just going to kind of do a nice little even kind of foundational uh, layer of this color and then we'll go over top of it. And we'll add a little bit of this sky blue color around the edges and some cerulean around the edges here. I love using this three color combo. It's so pretty. And if you're unsure on like exactly where to kind of put like the darks and the lights and whatnot, you know, you can always look at reference photos. Um, you know, coloring stuff inside jars, like the physics of light and color and whatnot sometimes are a little bit warped and a little goofy. And, uh, you know, you kind of have to either, you know, just kind of guess at it or use a reference photo either of, um, like realistic, you know, looking stuff in jars or even some other illustrations of stuff in jars and, uh, use that as a little bit of a guide. And I'm probably going to do quite a lot of gold accents on these. I might try some silver, but I'm a big fan of gold. You guys have seen some of my, some of my coloring it has a lot of gold in it. So I think I'm going to do this, this area and then maybe even some of the cross in gold. Now this space, this is definitely the bit that is going to be a little bit tricky. That's always the area where you kind of have to think through exactly what that kind of negative space in the bottle is going to look like. All right, for the negative space here, I'm actually just going to use a cool gray for now. And I'm just sort of going to follow this line so that there is an outline of sort of that edge curvature of the bottle. I was thinking about drawing it in, but I think I'm actually not going to do that. Oh, and I already screwed up. <laughs> Thank God it was with the lightest color. Now I'm just going to follow with each sort of darkest color that I do. I'm just going to have that be what is closest to the edge. All right, now with my darkest gray, which is the just 70%, I'm just going to outline the edge here. Just maybe like a quarter of an inch down. Very light pressure. Whoop. I know I was going to do that. Like here, it's really easy for some reason to keep that white line here. I forget every time. All right, now I'm going to go back to maybe this 20%. I'm just going to help kind of work some of this transition out. I'm going to get out some of my white uh, paint pens and markers. This is a white Posca in kind of a thicker. This one might be empty. I need to re-up on my Poscas. And then a little bit smaller Posca and a white gel pen. Because I do... Let's see if this one's out. I do want to kind of draw in some of these reflection lines in the glass. And this is not entirely opaque. So what I might do is do a layer and then kind of let it dry and then go back and do another. And I think I'm gonna do one right here as well. And while that's drying, I'm gonna take my gold marker, because I love this thing, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of texture here in the gold. All right, this is this is dry now. Let's see if we can get this opaque. And you have to be a little bit careful because for some reason it just likes to kind of pill a little bit. 
Actually, you know what? I have this giant set of chalk markers that Chocola sent me a while ago, like months ago, that I have yet to use. And they come in all these colors. Like I'll bet you I can use this white because my Posca is a little bit dry. So it works much the same way. It has one of those tips that uh, you can kind of depress to get the ink going. And then it'll work just like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is so much um, paintier. <laughs> so much more full of paint than my Posca. Much better. Perfect. All right, and that is it. Thank you so much for joining me on this little kind of mini episode today. I think the fish is by far my favorite part. And I hope that you kind of took away that, you know, don't just take your coloring um, at face value. You can always draw in something unexpected, especially if you're, you know, maybe not comfortable with it. You can use some references from Pinterest or Google, you know, wherever you can find, you know, a little bit of inspiration or reference, it is definitely there for the taking. So if you liked this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit the notification bell for updates. I will see you guys later. Thanks again for joining me. Happy coloring. Bye-bye.